what's your birthday, we'll tell you that. What is good, everybody? We are back with this week's episode of Talking League, the show where we talk shit, talk shop, and talk league. It's your commissioner, Aflo, coming to you live and in prime time from Cupertino, California. Another week, another couple Monday night nail biters. Man, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. And uh, boy, is it deja vu. It is four weeks into the season, and the big news here is Victor and David have made a trade, which we're going to get it into it. We're going to get in depth into it later. Uh, but it is one of the many reasons why I am glad to be joined by Trader Vic himself, Victor Angiano. Vic, thank, thanks for joining me. What can I tell you, a -Flo? I wish I wasn't here right now. I wish the trades that I made with David didn't happen, but it did happen. Let's just jump into it. No need to discuss why I did it. We'll talk about that later in the show. But we move on. We find ways to make better trades. There's always a new 24 to make better decisions. That's what my focus is. is. Tunnel vision. By the end of the night, I'll make a trade with A-Flow. Never think that back to normal. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Anyways, we got a lot to get to today. So let's start with some major moves around the league. In some effort to conserve time, we will be going through the moves that we thought were most interesting, most intriguing, and most impactful. Uh, starting with the waivers, not necessarily going through all of them, but Victor, how about we look at this list here? Tell us about some of the moves you made, and other than yourself, tell us about some moves that you thought was the most interesting and most impactful. Well, the biggest one was Joshua Palmer by Nicole. She spent 122, followed by me, which I was also in for uh, Joshua Palmer. I only put $81, so it was a little short end there. But I did get Quinton Johnson, which I believe has a future there in, with the Chargers in that offense, followed by C.J. Strutt uh, coming in at 61. Uh, I mean – I also got Joshua Downs. Those are the three guys that I wanted four of those guys. I got three of them, so I'll live with that. But the one that is kind of sneaky that is, for me is Luke Musgrave. I mean, the guy is starting to become something in that Packers offense. Uh, I like what he did. Uh, those are the biggest, um, I guess, in my opinion, the best waiver claims that there were. It was Nicole's, my three, with Luke Musgrave. I think those were... Uh, probably the top five that I would say that you can you can look back and say you know what those might play some some dividends down the down the line. So yeah, Nicole made it really tough for you to get both Joshua Palmer and Quinn Johnson. She basically made you choose one because there's no way you were gonna get both with the amount of money that they went to. Uh, I like that she went all in on Joshua Palmer. I thought you were going to. I even said it in the chat. 
Reason being is Quentin Johnston is a lot like uh, uh, Devon uh, Achain. He can break out, but it's not going to be in a while. We, we, we think it could be next week, but it's going to be down the line where he breaks out. And uh, I think in your case, seeing that you have the flex spots open, you can use a Joshua Palmer now rather than a Quentin Johnson later. But maybe Quentin Johnson later is going to be uh, such a coup that it won't matter. So we'll see about that for you. Um, another thing that I, I that kind of popped out to me was uh, Fajardo finally listening and going for Jeff Wilson. Only a dollar. I put a bid on him too, but I didn't have enough roster spots for it to go through. I actually put a $2 bid. Fajardo put $1 bid. He ended up with Jeff Wilson, and now he has a nice little handcuff there to um, – to Raheem Oster. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there is a uh, ad chain that you have to worry about, but uh, it's best to have a handcuff like that because if one of those running backs go down, then Jeff Wilson becomes very valuable. Uh, so those were the ones that, are, that, are, that really caught my eye. Um, and then you have Byron with DJ Shark and myself with Zach Charbonnet. I really wanted Charbonnet this week. Uh, he looked really good against the Panthers. Uh, although I don't think he's going to have much value unless Ken Walker gets injured. But if he does, that would be the number one waiver claim of that week. So I thought I'd get ahead of it, see what see what falls, see what shakes loose. But yeah, overall, a lot of m money spent, maybe not as impactful names as we got weeks one, two, and three, but all the same. I think Joshua Palmer can help a team like the Cole. I think you, you have the right idea, uh, right, right track of mind going after Quentin Johnston, and then you have C.J. Stroud because it seems like you're not, not going to be streaming quarterbacks. Uh, so we'll see which direction you go with that. And then finally, Byron with D.J. Chark, uh, just, you know, taking a flyer on there. And then you, of course, getting Josh Downs, who actually was a popular waiver claim, but everybody decided to just, you know, put a few dollars. You went in at 48 because you had the extra fab, and you ended up with them. So that's pretty much the waivers this week. Again, we zoomed right through them for time constraints. But I think everybody gets the gist of it. Waivers, the further along the season you get, if there's no injuries, waivers are just waivers. So we'll see how fab shakes out. And uh, we'll see there's people that have a lot of fab left, like Byron, and they have it to blow. And then there's people that have almost no fab left, like myself and Paul, who have under $50. Moving on to what we all came here to talk about. We all wanted to hear the thoughts that goes on in the head of <laughs> Victor Anguiano. Trades, 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 trades. We love them. We hate them. We can't live with them. We can't live without them. Uh, as El Chino and Chada once said, imagine fantasy football without trades. It would fucking suck. And I tend to agree. So let's get into the trades. We got two of them. Kind of three, maybe two and three bleed in together. But I guess they're all yours, Victor. So why don't you go ahead and get us started? Uh, take us through the David and Victor trade as as you saw it. As you saw it, as you were thinking, take us through your thought process. And then take us through why do you regret it? Do you regret it because everybody talked down on the trade? Or do you regret it at all? Do you think somewhere in that head deep down but you just don't want to say it that this trade is going to come back and make you a legitimate playoff contender well i appreciate you giving me the floor because uh i have a lot to say and we gotta want to wrap this shit up in less than an hour so that's trade number one deshaun watson Najee harry's and jameson williams with a hundred dollars with 53, 153 fab given to me by David. In return, he got Lamar Jackson. On paper, this trade looks, man, Victor got completely raped. This is a trade that, you know, it's going to benefit David. Short term, <laughs> I think so. Long term, a lot of people, even a lot of the members of the league might say Victor is screwed. Because his only leverage that he had with Lamar is gone. Now it's the second straight year he trades David, um, a top quarterback talent, yeah. which is understandable. Yeah, but I don't so. think Lamar, uh, in hindsight, is the same as Hurts. 
a lot of people might tend to disagree. Hurts ended up becoming the quarterback one. Is there a chance for Lamar? Absolutely. Do I think that's a possibility? I don't know about him becoming a quarterback one. Essentially, I got Deshaun Watson that is a tier below Lamar Jackson. I got Najee, which helps me with depth and as the bye week feelings start to come in. And Jamison Williams, that is down the road. The trade down the road with the 153 fab that I got, Quinton Johnson, CJ Strud, and Josh Downs, I traded all of that for arguably the best player of the deal, which is Lamar. But down the road, if Quinton Johnson can put it together, if Jamison Williams can put it together, these are two guys that, you know, project, I mean, say what you want, but they could have put up at least 12 points per game. Is exactly. that going to happen? I don't know. Was my team going to get any better keeping Lamar? I also don't think that because my team was was really crappy. I had no depth. I had no, t I had no tight end. I had no flexes. At least this gives me a lot more flexibility of what I want to do moving forward. Do I think I'm done after the first trade? No, because I came back and did Elijah Moore, Jalen Warren, and Dallas Goddard for Brian Robinson and Romeo Dobbs. Do I love Brian Robinson? Absolutely. Did I lose, you know, right now the trade? Probably because Brian Robinson, but I'm also looking at Brian Robinson's upcoming week is that he's facing, uh, the, he's facing the Eagles. And so that's also something that I, I was considering. Do I think that Jalen Warren has an easier week? Yes. Should I have been looking at this long term? Possibly. But I think, like I said again, I also got Elijah Moore out of the deal. I think Elijah Moore with Deshaun, Johnson, Deshaun uh, Watson has a lot of potential. Um, it's not, obviously, it's not Amari Cooper. But on top of that, I also got Dallas Goddard. Um, so I think those three players, depth-wise, are going to help me long-term trying to figure out what I need to do for my roster. My tight end position got better. You know, say what you want, that maybe he's had a rough start. But so has other players in the, in the league have started out slow, and then they tend to pick things up. So. I think Deshaun um, is a downgrade. I think Elijah is going to help out my flexors. I do think Dallas Goddard is in a better situation than Kincaid or Ferguson right now. And then the last trade, it was Zay Jones for $50 for Fab. Do I believe in Zay Jones? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people might say that Christian Kirk is back to being himself. I tend to disagree a little bit. I think Zay Jones is getting the red zone targets, but he is a boom and bust, boom or bust. And same thing with Romeo Dobbs. They're boom or bust. They are getting the red zone uh, targets, but if they don't, if they don't get uh, a touchdown in a game, it's pretty much it's a dud. So, I I took with what I saw, and Elijah Moore is getting a lot of targets, and so right now I'm chasing volume. And I think Jim, like I said, Najee Harris, it's not the most sexy pick, especially with Jalen Warren. But I think my team overall right now it seems like it got worse down the road it could look a lot different if things pan out the way they do you know so all in all i think lamar jackson for a chance to fix the rest of your team and fix your depth if some of those players hit it's a price you have to pay and that's something that you know you have to live by if, if lamar becomes this wide receiver top five then well i'm screwed if he doesn't then i kind of you know I, I lucked out a little bit. So, but you know, it's, it's people are going to have mixed feelings about it. Um, I'm okay. At the, at the end of the day, I made the trade. I took the risk. I should have kept maybe Lamar, but the reality is my team was not going to get any better. This at least gives me a chance to fix what I already had. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of logic to what you said, but let me speak here kind of for the rest of the league. And you say mixed opinions, but it sounds like the opinions aren't very mixed. They're mostly on David's side. But I would like to say something. In a vacuum, in a trade analyzer, if you put these names and say, hey, these are the players, and I'm getting Lamar Jackson, you have the stronger side of the deal. That's why I don't like these trade analyzers, because you can put a bunch of names and they could equal a bigger name, and you say, okay, maybe this is a good deal, when 
In reality, it's not because there's a positional advantage to just having Lamar Jackson and a bunch of other um, spots available so that now you can make roster moves. My problem is here, you are two and one. Where's the rush? You can hold Lamar Jackson for weeks, see if his value accumulates, and you say, hey, I got these two players, Najee Harris, um, uh, Jamison Williams. Maybe down the line, they both square, scored 12 points. 12 points each, boom, as a double flex, that's 24 points. Lamar Jackson scored 28 for you last week. So you should have been working. The, the lack of depth can sometimes be used to your advantage. And it sounds strange, but last year, Fajardo proved that. He drafted five IDPs, and he used the fact that he had no depth and no attachments to any of his bench to churn the roster week by week by week until he hit on some waivers. So I think a lot of people's opinions stems from that, that that's what you should have been doing, and you should have held out for a big Lamar Jackson package. And I think you would not have done it if you weren't racing against the time to try to get this trade through so you can do waivers. So a lot of it had to do with like patience and wanting to get a deal done so these waiver so you can you could process these waiver claims when you should have you had all the leverage so you had to hold out and be like you know what I'm not gonna do this but I will say this Jameson Williams we haven't seen him perform in the National Football League he got one touchdown with with uh, Jared Goff and that's about all he's done since he's been in the league. But if he comes back and he performs, this could be one of the coops of the trade. Najee Harris hasn't done anything. You make fun of Madison and, and all this, but Najee Harris is right there with Madison in terms of, of what he did. And then Deshaun Watson, you know, I think you're going to stream QBs, but the problem with streaming QBs is if you have two QBs, one for this week, one for next week, you have one less roster spot to churn. So I think that's where a lot of people's, you know, apprehension of this deal comes from. And then also there's the fact that you can draw a comparison directly from Lamar Jackson's Jalen Hurts, although lesser, and directly from Najee or J.K. Dobbins. So maybe this trade turns out good for you, but I can definitely see, uh, and I'm, I probably was one of the most vocal ones, why people would get turned off or especially given that it's the same person. Like if it was Fajardo or if it was me or if it was Nicole or Byron, but the, for the fact that it's the same guy that did it last year, I think that's why I got more reaction than it probably otherwise would have. So I think that you can turn this into a win still. And I think that you are active and have the activity to be able to do that. It's up to you to see what you can make out of this because $153 a fab, that's a big deal. Then you accumulate 50 more. If you hit on waivers, hitting on waivers is the fastest way to get back to prominence because you can either hit on someone you can that you can start and plug in your lineup every week, or you can hit on someone that you like and may not have as much value, but his value allows you to trade another player that might be looked up more, more esteemed. So from now until the end of the season, until the trade deadline, it's all about the moves you make because they'll be magnified. But if anyone can do it, Victor. And I know a guy that once won 0 5 and made the playoffs. So I, I know some people that can do it. If anyone can do it, bud. I mean, all I got to say is I get that Deshaun Watson, but I think CJ Strutt is starting to come into his own. And right now, on paper, it's only been three games. But man, CJ Strutt looks like. He is the answer in Houston. And yeah, for he's had it. he has had back to back 20 point games. He is starting to become something I'm not saying I'm not gonna say special, but something that you could rely on week to week. So I took a gamble. Is it gonna pay off? We we're about to see. But I think when you really look at what CJ Strutt can do. I think he should be able to ball out this upcoming week. And so what Lamar was giving me, yeah, it's that running ability. It's that, you know, he got two rushing touchdowns. That right there is value alone. But to say that the streaming quarterbacks, I don't really think I'm going to be doing that. You know, just just as back, back knowledge, when I picked up C.J. Strud, 
Augie was the first one to call him because he wanted to see just Trent. So across the league, they realized some members, now not all, but CJ Sherman does have some value. And for me to pick him up gives me that security blanket if Deshaun Watson is completely trash. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. We have to kind of we have to move on. We have to figure out what comes next. But um my team right now looked bad. I mean, I I'm the first one to admit <laughs> it. I it doesn't look I thought bad. you were gonna say something else. <laughs> no, I also have to be I have to be transparent. I think Josh Downs, that could actually play off for me and Elijah Moore. Those are two guys that are a little bit under the radar, but they're coming into their own in their offenses, and they're essentially slot guys. And we know when when there's a younger quarterback, a quarterback that's trying to get the legs under them, like just around Watson, and in this case, either if it's Anthony Richardson, having slot guys can create a lot of volume and it can help you a lot in your flexes. So that's kind of the – Hopefully things work out, but you know, I got to keep making trades, got to keep making moves, and hopefully we can turn this shit around. And Jameer Gibbs, that's that to me is right there the answer. If he explodes and he gets going, man, I have Tyreek, I have AJ Brown, and if CJ Stroud gets going and Elijah and Downs, my team doesn't look that bad. And then reinforcements hopefully are coming in Jamison Williams and Quentin Johnson, but that is a, that's a big if. So. Yeah, and it's an age-old story. Do you want a top-heavy team, or do you want a team with no holes? We've seen time and time again the top-heavy team win championships, and sometimes you're too balanced and you rely on that balance. And if a couple people don't have those big, those big to average games that they normally have, then you're not you're going to get outscored by the top-heavy team. So that could play a part. And you always got to remember the old story of the red paper clip. There was once a man that owned a red paper clip and through his many networking connections through the moves he made I've heard the discipline it took to trade he traded that red paper clip into a fantasy championship <laughs> maybe you could do it but let's go ahead and move on to weekly awards highest score paul 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 153 points he finally manages the highest score for the first time this year. He was also close to doing it three times in a row and getting being $30 richer. But alas, he's only $10 richer, scoring at an alarming rate. Despite continuing to play Joshua Kelly, and everybody keeps on him, bro, why I keep playing Joshua Kelly? He's like, you know what? I'm a loyal fucking man. And Agent, Agent Pina isn't going to be on the case. Because he did not lose to Byron this week. Congratulations, Paul. You are the highest scorer. And who's paying Paul? Lowest score. I think the Venmo transaction already happened, actually. Very thankful for that. I don't like hounding people. So any any way that you can help the commissioner, even small, really appreciate it. Nicole, 97 points scored. Not much you could have done lineup-wise to do better. Sometimes people that are the lowest scorers, hey, I could have made a better lineup decision here. Could have made a better lineup decision there. Nicole pretty much play, played her optimal lineup. They just did not perform this week. But to be fair, this high score of 97 wouldn't have been the lowest score of the previous two weeks. So it is the highest lowest score thus far through three weeks. Manager of the week, David, David, David. Man, I counted him out. <laughs> Of the big upset versus Hector, which you, by the way, Victor, you picked that one. I got that I one did. wrong. Uh, the reason why he's manager of the week is a little different than I usually pick him. I picked David as manager of the week because he did the shrewd move of picking up Devon Atchain right before that 1 p.m. or the 10 a.m. game started. And he exploded for 51 points on his bench which usually I, I grade that down. But just being able to make that call with uh, against time with that pressure to get at chain, and he was the number one claim this week and completely erasing that possibility from anyone to, to pick him up. Somebody that I own for two weeks, by the way, when I, when I, had, when I had Mostert. Um, I thought that was a really good move. And also he acquired Lamar Jackson, made his team look better, and now he could churn his roster a little bit. So as long as he makes the correct moves, 
I expect David to do what he did last year and kind of work himself back into it. But remember, last year, he only ended up seven and seven. So it's not it's not all uphill, downhill, however you want to say it. It's not all uphill. All right. He still has to make the right moves and he has to get on a little win streak here. Because as Paul saw, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to just win games. You don't only have to score an immense amount of points. You also have to be in the right matchups because defense wins championships, as I tell Byron. Moving on to Mr. Inefficient. Victor, I know you have been getting destroyed on this pod today, and it just continues. 113 points scored, but the reason you are Mr. Inefficient is because if you had played Romeo Dobbs, you would have beat me. But more importantly, since you've already traded Romeo Dobbs, you probably wouldn't have blown up your entire team, traded Lamar to David, traded Dobbs away. X, Y, Z, and a third. We've talked about it enough already, if you were 3 and 0. So, because of that, you are Mr. Inefficient. What you know what? sticks out to you there? You know what? Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> this is a damn fantasy football league. Uh-huh. And if you ask me, why the fuck do I care about losing? This shit is affecting my, 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 my job. <laughs> My marriage, I keep looking at my damn phone. I can't stop looking at my phone, asking myself, why did I make the moves that I made? I was not going to say this shit, but you know what? (laughs) I got to let it out. I got to vent right now. I talked to Lupe, my beautiful wife. I was like, Lupe, after the trade, as we were going to bed, I said, Lupe, what did I do? And like a good wife, she is. She said, it's okay. It's just made up. You don't have to worry. It's like, look, but that's not it. This is, goes beyond. It's just made up. Hey, she's not wrong. But you know what? I'm Mr. Inefficient. I'm Mr. Inefficient. Fine. Call me Mr. Inefficient. I don't care. It's just you know this what? week. You got this, buddy. But you, know, but you know what? Changes are coming. Changes are fucking coming. And each one of you better be ready. Each one of you. Because I'm coming after each one of you. And I'll talk about all you want to have to, but I am going <laughs> to kick your fucking ass. You see this? This is Woo! Augie. This oh, Augie, Augie, no! Augie's I'm coming really after you. Man. Jesus. Oh, I, like oh I, know, I know he is sturdy. You know what? <laughs> A.K.A. the lead singer of Grupo Frontera. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I'm done. Move on. Moving on from the weekly awards, I guess he didn't want to shout out Paul or, or David. Of course, you didn't want to shout out David. You blocked him. But at least, you know what? I want to shout him out. Paul, I see you. You're one and two. But you know what? Your flowers are coming, Paul. So I'll stop it right there. Moving on to everybody's favorite, the power rankings and victory we are making great time what could possibly go wrong every time we say we're that? gonna we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna all right so we're, we're gonna, gonna do these power going. rankings and we're gonna take your guys's um, uh your suggestions and we're gonna go ahead and do some rapid fire predictions from 12 through 7 and then from there we'll take it uh you know normal go so let's start with the power rankings starting at number 12 victor who we got we got Big Kev coming in at three with 364 points scored. He falls to one and two. Doesn't have Saquon Burrow is hurt. He's dealing with a lot of banged up guys. Debo came out um, today, I believe, on the injury report. His team right now is a little hospital. He just needs a little <laughs> bit of attention. <laughs> so, Sanders, Higby, he's beat up. Man. He's beat up. Hey, yeah. but in case you need a running back, hit my line. I got you. <laughs> Number 11, Byron, 331. People might say, Byron, Nicole, what a power cup, powerful cup. You would think they would be on top. <laughs> but sadly, Nicole has to drag him through the fucking mud. No, no, no excuse me, not no, the other way yeah, around. Yeah. Byron drags Nicole through the mud because yeah, Byron comes in. Nicole's comes in, top, I'm, Byron's bottom. Hey, <laughs> hey, if that works, hey, happy, happy wife, happy life. That's what they say. So, Byron, keep doing what you're doing. You're coming in at number 11, 331 points scored, one and two points total in the league. He needs cut back. He'll be back. Cup. I'm sorry to tell you, buddy. 
Cup's not coming back. He's ramping up. He's ramping up. Uh, he's ramping up. Doesn't mean he's coming back anytime soon. He went to go see a specialist. If I was you, trade him. Number 11. Number 10, Augie. Augie, Augie, Augie. His back is snapped. Oh, shit. <laughs> not Augie, no. <laughs> 392 <laughs> points scored. He is <laughs> coming in at 10. Trevor Lawrence. Why do you want yeah. I I have CJ Strutt if you need him. Man, the guy looks blazing. You got Tank. You got Collins. You got Pierce. You got Robert Woods, Bobby Trees. You got the number one guy, John Mechie. He's got <laughs> so many weapons. Augie, we need a trade. And T. Higgins, what the hell is going on with T. Higgins? He's inconsistent. Two touchdowns week two, nothing weeks one hey, three. But if I was you, I would be worried about Trevor Lawrence and about T. Higgins. Coming in at nine. And number nine, here we go. Fucking David, I hate his little short little midget ass <laughs> he comes in with 365.5 points scored he's a, five. He gotta win he gotta win he took down hector you call man that cuts the man that ca- cuts trees for a living he came <laughs> down on him and he got a chan in the process timber did not have spent a single dollar but you know what david comes in at nine i'm sure he won't stay there but now the big question byron david you know what? I gotta take David. Got? I gotta oh, take David. David. Taking David versus Byron. Okay. He just I'm, got he got Lamar. Yeah. He got an upgrade. I think his team right now is is ready to go. And Byron is just a little banged up. He's waiting for Cup. I think maybe Byron gets his first win, maybe week five, but we're gonna have to wait for that win. Yeah, starting 0 4 is tough because nobody else is 0 4. Hard to say about the projections because you know Byron likes to bench all his people. Uh, two IR spots, difficult to turn. And then Kirk Cousins, can he keep it up against a Carolina def- defense that's missing some pieces? Uh, I got to agree with you, Victor. I got David winning this game. You have David? Uh, I mean, that's what we agreed. That's yep. what we agreed. We Moving on to Sorry. number eight. What can I tell you? This guy is is going through it. Here's a guy. Whose marriage is being affected by fantasy football. <laughs> okay, it's actually not being affected. That was a stretch. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, yeah, it's it's on my mind all the time. I'm like, fuck, why do I care about this? But you know what? Kudos to David. He took advantage <laughs> of me again. But I told him, you know what, David? This is the last damn time. Oh, my God. I hope to fucking God. All right, Victor. 353 la- points scored last by you. Time. Two and one, but you have a completely different team than the team that won the first two games of the season. So it's going to be very interesting to see who you start between Stroud, Deshaun Watson, uh, that Baltimore defense, or Stroud. He 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 has to come back. That's why he's putting up points. The Texans get behind. He tries to come back. He's very serviceable, and that's why he's able to put up those fantasy points. So it's going to be interesting to see what the game script is for the Houston Texans. What is your predictions? You versus Augie. You snapped them in half. Hey, Augie gets a lot of flack on this uh, on this show here. I I talked to this very camera, and I talked shit to Augie, and I said I was going to beat him. You snapped Augie in half. He beat me. Is he going to beat you this week, Victor? You know what, Augie? I love the fact that you picked up Purdy. I love Christian McCaffrey. Great players. T. Higgins. Wow. Joe Mixon, amazing. <laughs> Cortland Sutton, uh, astonishing. TJ Hawkinson, solid. I look at your team from top to bottom. No complaints. Augie's a man that doesn't make, doesn't take risk when you don't have to take the risk. He plays the rock. field how it's supposed to play. It has to be played. He is a rock. Then you have me, quicksand. <laughs> that finds a way through. <laughs> quicksand himself. Rock versus quicksand. What's gonna work? A lot of people say I'll go with the rock, but you know what? I'm slippery. I take the form of a rock. I take the form of a snake, but I can take the form of a hammer, and I'm gonna hammer the shit out of that rock until I win. I am doubling down. 
I think this is the week Gibbs goes off. I think Tyreek and A.J. Brown are going to have big games. I think Dallas Goddard is going to give me a touchdown. I think Josh Downs against the Rams is going to be a money. Elijah Moore is going to be great. Hey, this is what this league is about. Shocking the world. David shocked the world last week. Why can't I? You know, I am right now projected without a kicker on my lineup, 136 to 108. You know what? I don't care. David versus Goliath. And this is Augie versus Vic. But I'm going to knock the shit out of Augie. That's all I have to say. Yeah, uh, I think Augie wins by 50. Moving on to number seven. <laughs> it is myself. 344.5 points scored. Two and one with a Monday night football victory. That is the second one of the year. You know me, man. I've done it last year. I've done it for the last four years, honestly. I love to cut it close with that Monday night miracle. I don't necessarily think this was a miracle because I was projected to win all along, but it was. It did come down to the last quarter of the game. And that 2-2 two -two out well catch to win the game plus a touchdown to make it look a little more of a deceiving score. I think it was closer than the actual score showed. But again, what we always say, garbage time is fantasy time. I'm interested to see if I will need another Monday Night Miracle this week with Darren Waller playing on Monday or <laughs> if I can finally win convincingly and move up further in the rankings. Rapid fire prediction, Kevin versus Anthony. Victor, who you got? I got a flow. Big Kev. Fix your team. Let's talk. Let's make some trades. <laughs> I know you don't want the show. You need help. I need help. Let's make it work. April moves to uh, three and one, or yeah, three and one in the season. Moving on. Boom. Number six, Brian, three ninety one points scored, two and one. Uh, lost Chubb. We made a trade for Brian Robinson. Uh, Brian, six spot. Congratulations. You have Maya. Also moving up. Happy moving up. In hey, the world. you're moving up. Hey, keep doing what you're doing. Beautifully done. And now we got our top five, top five, top five. You know, I think we might have done this too fast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sad hanging this phone up, and uh, you know, we only got, uh, we only got 24 minutes of content. I think it's been longer than that, but hey, who's counting? Top five, top, top five, top five. Number five, Christian Ugo Fajardo. 361 points scored. He's two and one. But is there an RB concern in that in that room? You know, we look at his team, and it's easy to say, hey man, take take Tyreek Hill from Victor's team week one, take those 41 points, he would have done terrible. It's easy to say, take Mostert out. Take Mostert out of the lineup, and what did your team do? It's easy to say that, but the fact of the matter, he traded for Mostert. He got him at the perfect time before he blew up in, in value. And now, is he a sell high player? Yeah, but because of how he was drafted and where he is today. Not necessarily because he can't carry the load in that backfield. But, Victor, is that RB room cause for concern? There's oh, absolutely. Some, there's some age issues, there's some health issues, and there's some oh, productivity yeah. issues. Yeah, look, you know, when I look at Fajardo's team, I say, you know what? He's got a good squad. You know, he's got, he's got Madison. He's got Garrett Wilson. He's got Chris Godwin. Wonder where he got those players. But the <laughs> one that really sticks out is Moser. 45 points. I'm looking at the score. He would have lost to, to Big Kev. And Big Kev would be having a whole different conversation. It would be look a lot different. But the fact is, Moser went off for good reason. The Denver Broncos are an awful team. They dropped 70 on them. But I look at that like you mentioned, the backfield. You got Moser. You got the age, you got the injury prone, you know, narrative about him. You got this young, young kid in our chain. You got Jeff Wilson coming back soon. But who knows if Mike McDaniel shocks everybody and just makes a trade for Jonathan Taylor. All of a That'd sudden, crazy, man. all of a sudden, Moster doesn't look like the guy anymore. Our chain probably is going to be the second guy there because, in my, you know, this is not fi fantasy wise, but I do think the Colts would probably try to get a guy like Moster in the trade because the Dolphins are not going to trade the rookie 
Um, so I think there's a lot of that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, if I was if I was Fajardo, I wouldn't be having Raheem Mostert as a lock because Derrick Henry does not look like the guy anymore that he was he was a couple of years back. So um, I would be concerned, and I would be trying to shop him around. His team has balance, but there's no star. And I say, you know what? I'm scared about about DK. I'm scared about Gary Wilson. I don't think he has this uh, a superstar that can really hurt you. As an overall team, like you mentioned, he has a lot of balance. And with that balance, it will take you to the playoffs. But does he have enough yeah. to find that second gear? Right now, he that. doesn't. He doesn't have so, it on his roster. So this right is now. a good example of kind of how I was talking about. Your team would be more top heavy, and his team would be more balanced. It's very interesting to see how each one of them will play as you get more balanced because you're going to be turning the waivers. And he continues on with his very balanced team. Uh, Luke Musgrave, I think that was an underrated pickup. It's better than mm-hmm. Hayden Hurst for sure. So I'm interested to see how Fajardo's team goes from here. Can Madison keep it up? What happens when Akers come back? Henry, Tajay Sharp is kind of a, a thing in Tennessee. So that's interesting because we're used to Derrick Henry being the workforce. So we got Henry with question marks. We got Madison with question marks. Aaron Jones is coming back from a hamstring injury, question mark. And most are, don't get me wrong, lights out. He's the number one running back in all of fantasy right now. Boom. I traded him. And I told him, most is going to go off. I told him. I didn't boom. lie. I don't boom. lie in my trades. Boom. Boom. But – the question marks for him isn't productivity. It's going to be, does he keep the volume if a Jonathan Taylor comes back, which the answer to that would be no. If Devon Atchin gets more touches, if Jeff Wilson gets uh, thrown into that role, that's the question marks with Moser. Personally, I think Moser's going to be fine, and I think it's Coop, and I think he should keep him. But I could totally see why he would sell high. So that's my feelings on his RB room. So I think I, I'm higher than Moser than most people. So we'll see. We'll see about that age, that health, and that productivity. Moving on to number four. Oh, I love when this guy is in the top echelon of this league because I feel like nobody gets happier when we say, hey, you're in the top four. You're in the top three. You're in the top two. Maybe one day you're in the top one. Julio, Juice J, JP, Prada. 377 points scored, two and one, and finally gets the monkey off his back. He won the Prado Bowl. Augie, for as nice as he is, doesn't think, hey, maybe this year I'm going to let my primo win the Prado Bowl. No, he beats him over and over and over and over. But here is Juicy J going on year three or four. I forget which one it is. Boom. Takes the Prado Bowl. Now, Victor, tell me, are you a little bit worried about how Kareem Hunt will affect Jerome Ford? Before I answer that, Juicy, by the way, thank you for hosting on Sunday. We really appreciate it. Great time. Great time with you. you. Beautiful party. Hey, that bar lights out. Jets bar. It was a Jets bar, by the way. Jets, 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 Jets. Hey, that little, little liquor store. Where they sell tortas, also fire. Love your neighborhood, by the way. But moving on to but Kareem Hunt, um, I do think he might affect Ford. I what I saw from from Ford it was that you know he is going to be at least after one. We have a very small sample size, but I think he is going to be touchdown dependent. He um, they're going to try to use Kareem Hunt probably. They brought him because of his knowledge of the offense. They feel that he can be um, he can be a, a good change of pace for for uh, for Ford. Ford is also a great player and probably a better version right now than Kareem Hunt is. But I do think Kareem Hunt is going to have some work in that passing game. I do think he is going to take some touches away from Ford, and I really think it's going to be a it's going to be a running back by committee. They're probably going to give it to the hot hands, so it's going to be very hard to kind of predict when uh, when is it going to be a Kareem Hunt game, when is it going to be a Ford game. I think Ford, if he doesn't get a touchdown, it's going to be very um, – it's probably going to be a dud, whereas Kareem Hunt, because he's going to get a lot of that passing uh, work, he probably is going to remain relevant even for a flex 
low end RB two consideration, and Ford, uh, it's touchdown or bust. So uh, that on that note, you know, Kareem Hunt is going to affect, but it's probably going to be in the coming week. So uh, maybe Juicy thinks differently and wants to keep Ford. Uh, Thielen, that guy has come on and game busters. Now he, he looks Thielen. like he's always the last one in, first one in, last one out. He's a gritty player. He's a gym rat. All the good things that you could say about any colored person. But that's you know what? what? Is. Feeling is feeling it. Because right now he is putting good numbers, even, you know, from a conversation with Juicy, he's like, you know what? I was not expecting Feeling to beat the player that he is at his age in the Panthers, but I think with Dalton, Dalton know, helps. Dalton help. Bryce, Bryce Young. I don't know. Bryce Young. Uh, looks like he's healthy again, so we'll see if they make the move back. Which you know, if you really want to see what your rookie can do, maybe maybe you give him a, another week to kind of slow it down. You know, get get uh get back to speed, and hopefully that little break helps him uh, because he is the first overall pick. We will find out. But Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook, that is a big question mark for Juicy. I think. Um, you got to play Brees Hall. Um, the Jets know there's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of issues with that offense right now. But I think Zach Wilson, they need to run the ball more. If they're going to – they picked up Trevor Semyon. I don't think it's any better. Maybe it's a slight tad, a little bit better than what they have with Zach Wilson. But I think this team needs to probably run the ball more, needs to use Kareem Hunt uh, – I mean, yes, use Brees Hall a little bit more to get this offense going, to see if there is some life and they can have a service of quarterback and with what they have right now in the building. So um, I think moving forward, Juicy knows that. That's why he wants Brees Hall, and that's why he traded for Brees Hall. Uh, so for I think it's 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 where he's supposed to be. He he had a big win last week against Byron. I uh, went a little bit back and forth, I believe, and then he's at four. So good for Juicy, and uh, keep rocking and rolling, Juice. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how he handles Brees and Dalvin. I do think it's going to be – Brees is going to be valuable. It's just not if, it's when for me. So I differ from your opinion. I would keep rocking Jerome forward until the wheels fall off. And I think that he's going to be able to stretch forward long enough before Hunt gets up, up to speed. And by that time, Brees Hall may be back. And if Brees Hall is back, that's top 24 running back easily. Moving on to number three. Was number one. Mm. But the thing about adversity that it makes or breaks us. And I'm not worried one bit about number three. Nicole coming in at 377 points scored, two and one, lowest score of the week. But that was without Jalen Waddle in a game where Miami scored 70. They might have scored 77 if they had Jalen Waddle, maybe 80. Who knows? Waddle's back. Kamara's back. My real concerns from the cold don't stem from the rest of the roster. And I think you might agree with me on this one, Vic. My concerns with Nicole are her QB room. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, and, I, and I'll just share. You know, I won't release exactly the details of our conversation with Nicole today. But we were talking about trades, and I brought up, you know, I want to say maybe an hour ago before we got on the pod, I, I brought up the idea of, we you know, Strud, she said that she's okay without without him. So she thinks she could probably, you know, Daniel Jones and Sam Howell can be inserviceable. It's going to be really hard after what we saw. Of course, Daniel Jones uh, had a very bad game against the Niners, but it is the Niners. They have an incredible defense. But – I think that's going to be the biggest question mark for her moving forward. She does have a pretty good team. You know, she's – Waddle should turn around. You would think he would turn around, and set, especially in that offense. Uh, he's had 20, 12 points in the last two games. He missed week three. So, I think, you know, if, if we really look at, at Nicole's team, there is room for improvement in her quarterback room, as you mentioned. But, you know, when we're looking at the Nicole for harder prediction, I tend to slight a little bit towards Nicole, even though she has Daniel Jones as a starter, only because Daniel Jones is facing Seattle. 
He's coming off a bad game. He got 10 days to really prepare for Seattle. And especially after the game that he put against uh, in Santa Clara, you have to believe he's going to play better than what he did. He can't get any worse, really. <laughs> and I look at, like I said, for um, Fajardo's team, it's, not, it's, not, it's a great team. But I think uh, Nicole has, line for line, has players with higher upside. Mm-hmm. And their ceilings are a lot, a lot higher than what right now uh, Fajardo has. So good chance maybe Fajardo falls to two and two. Uh, and Nicole goes, gets one back into the – gets another win, moves to three and one, and recovers from that loss uh, last week. Yeah, ESPN has Nicole with a slight advantage, 129 to 126. I think quarterback play is going to be interesting because Tua has been at his peak and he's been at his valley. Uh, I think the first week he scored over over uh, 20 points. I think he got 26. Second week he, he scored 11, although it was against Bill Belichick. Third week he goes 28. So is he going to continue the pattern? And uh, Chargers was a bad defense. New England was a good defense. Denver was a bad defense. Buffalo's a good defense. It's going to be very interesting to see how Tua plays. And if he doesn't play very well, then I think Daniel Jones might even have a chance to outscore him. And at that point, I think I might go Nicole because Mike Evans is a target there in uh, Tampa Bay. Jalen Waddle, he's going to get his, especially after missing out on that 70-point explosion. Alvin Kamara is the question mark for me because if Alvin Kamara comes back and posts a goose egg, I think Fajardo takes that game. But if mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara comes back, has five receptions, maybe scores a touchdown, I think Nicole could even have the chance to run away with it. So that's going to be the the X factor for me, Alvin Kamara coming back and what he does on his first game back. I'm going to go with Nicole, but I can see Fajardo taking that matchup pretty easily. Yeah, one of the things about Nicole's team that I, I just thought about, you know, Fajardo has Tua. She has Waddle. I mean, technically they kind of cancel each other out. But the ones Depends that on game gonna, flow, but yeah. Yeah. It, you know, the ones that are really are going to matter a lot. Mike Evans historically has done bad against uh, Marcus Lattimore yeah. being, you know, chased around by Marcus Lattimore. And That's, then Alvin yeah. Kamara, Alvin Kamara is the other one. That there shouldn't be anybody that gets in the way of Kamara, you know, coming back. Who knows what the plan is with them? If they're going to have them in a pitch count, if they're just going to let them go. Uh, but Mike Evans is the big one for me because you just said it. He does seem like the guy for Tampa Bay. And Nicole will need him this week to show up if she wants to be uh she wants to be Fajardo. So if those things don't go don't go Nicole's way, there's a there's a slight edge that Fajardo does have, like you said. But it's good always to mention that that you know Mike Evans has a very tough yeah. matchup. No, that, that's a good point for sure. It's gonna be interesting to see. If Lattimore breaks out the uh, cornerback strapped up uh, celebration, or if Baker Mayfield is going to play it a little differently, because I think in the past, these Buccaneers quarterbacks have said, all right, Lattimore is going to be blanketing Mike Evans. I'm going to go elsewhere. I'm going to go to Godwin. Mm -hmm. I don't see Baker as that type. He makes mistakes. He likes his guy. He sticks with this guy. He throws it to this guy. So maybe this is the week that Mike Evans actually does something against Lattimore. We won't know. We won't find out until game day, and we're really excited to see that one. Sounds like uh, you said you have Nicole on this one? I said I have Nicole, but keep in mind, Fajardo yeah. also has Godwin. So, yeah. Oh, that's true. Huh. Yeah, I guess that New Orleans game could swing everything. That's that's going to be one to watch. I got, I got Nicole, too, and I, I think we're both on the same page. It's going to be a close game. It's not that Fajardo's bad. It's more that it's going to be close and based on matchups. He might, she might edge it out. But if Fajardo gets those swings, like you said, because of Lattimore, because of Godwin, then I think that's how he has that path to victory. Moving on to number two. You know, I, I said this guy fucking sucked at fantasy football. I said, it's terrible. Nobody ever talks about it. Everybody says Victor sucks. Everybody says Big Kev is not invested enough. Everybody says Julio doesn't know what he's doing. Everybody says Fajardo makes too many trades. Everybody says me. I'm, I'm a husband. I haven't won championships since before the pandemic. Everybody says Hector doesn't know any of the rookies. Everybody says Byron complains about matchups every year, says everybody gets easy matchups except him. Everybody says Augie, he's too nice. Everybody says David, that's just Anthony's younger brother. 
But nobody ever Brian? says. Nobody talks My, about Brian. Brian has a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Brian has a fucking kid. Yeah, Brian doesn't open the app. You're right. You're right. But hopefully I didn't miss anybody. I hate you all equally. But nobody ever said Paul is just terrible at fantasy, has never won anything. But you know what? I was wrong. Paul's team looking great. He showed me a screenshot that said he finished in the top three three times. I had no idea. He's never won a championship. But could this be the year? I heard from a very reliable source that owes me a lot of money and a favor, the mayor of Las Vegas, that if Paul wins the league fantasy championship, the entire city of Las Vegas is throwing a parade. So we will see if Paul can convert and the mayor holds her end of the bargain and we get the biggest parade since the Las Vegas Golden Knights winning and hoisting the Stanley Cup. Paul's the highest scorer, 437. Finally breaks through, and the scary part, Victor, finally breaks through with the first win without Austin Eckler. What questions, if any, do you have on his team? Well, he has Austin Eckler on his starting lineup. Austin Eckler, limited at practice. We'll find out. Man, that juicy matchup against Las Vegas. If you Austin Eckler is ready, put him in there. I mean, Let him go. love Juicy. I love Juicy. I think his team is coming along. I think his team is making strides. But man, you look at you look at Paul's team. Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, James Conner, Devontae Adams, Michael Pittman, Mark Andrews, mm. Puka Nuku. Mm. I can't say it and say. Oh yeah, no, Juicy's gonna win this game. That's just that's just that's just terrible analysis. I think Paul deserves this. I think he has been what he started the season 0 and 2. 0 and 2. He gets He'd be number one and, otherwise. He'd be number one. In fact, he gets up to two and two, back to five hundred through two weeks. That's a great start. Doesn't mean you're means that he has to make some changes. But I think we're. I think Paul takes in this one, and I'm that, sorry, Juicy, but it ain't gonna be close. I think wow. Paul is gonna is gonna take this, and I think. I mean, look at the matchups. The matchups. Yeah. ESPN has them um, 149 to 131, which is I believe might be the largest discrepancy. Not because 131 isn't impressive, but because 149 is such a gaudy number. Uh, so it's interesting to see if Eckler is gonna play because if Eckler doesn't play, Juicy has a chance. If Eckler plays, it's not going to be pretty. I think I would have to agree with you there. Man, yeah, Paul, you talked about top heavier balance. Paul's team might be both. Man. Hey, who would have thought, huh? Uh, okay. not me. Not me. Bachelor, living in his you know, bachelor pad you know what in I Las think? Vegas. You know what I think happened? Did anybody see Paul drink? He didn't. Did he? He was. I, he he might have. He was. He was locked the he fuck He might in. have just been get. He played music. He was the DJ. He played the Discovery Station. He was serving shots left and right. I kept hearing, anybody want another shot? I'm like, oh, look, Paul's back, baby. Paul's getting ready to party. But you know what? I think he didn't drink. I think he went home. He slept in his own bed. Mm-hmm. I think he was doing some research to the odd hours in the morning. I think he showed up right on time for the draft. He had a breakfast, breakfast in his stomach. And he had a cold heart. And he looked at that draft board. He had a plan. He executed. He didn't deviate. And we are now seeing the fruits of his labor. Congratulations, Paul, on number two this week. I think we both got Paul in our prediction of the week. Juicy J, shock the world, baby. Paul, excellent work. Moving on to number one. And it's a little bit of a weird one because I struggle with this victory. I'm like, everybody that was in contention for number one lost. And Paul can't go from 0-2 and, and rank number six and seven, which is probably too high for an 0-2 team, all the way up to number one. Just can't do it. I have power rings work. It's not how it works. So I sat here and I said, who here 
is the most deserving of the number one power rankings of all the two and one team. And I said, you know what? It has to be the highest score of all the two and one teams. And that is Hector Mendoza with 425 points scored, moves to the top spot despite the loss. Can Walker, don't forget the third, huge game. Now, Paul, only question mark was Eckler's health. Hector, I think, has a little bit more question marks. Now, Ayuk, can he stay healthy? Will that injury linger? But is there anywhere else on his roster, Victor, that you see some question marks can can start to creep in? You know what? Uh, there, there's only much we can say about Hector. Oh, yes, team is great. Oh, he has a flag. Again. Oh, Again. he has Addison. Yeah. Well, you know what? But you know what I can tell you? I wouldn't be too. I wouldn't be too sure about Ken Walker the third. I wouldn't be too sure about Kyron Williams. If you look at Ken Walker, last game, the third. You know he had ninety-seven yards. He was facing Carolina. He doesn't get much. He doesn't get much of the receiving work. He had an amazing this game. Week Don't get did. me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He he is he is a top guy right now. NFC but, player of the week. But in back to back games, he's had two touch two touchdowns in each contest. That's true. At some point, it's very hard to project touchdowns. At those some touchdowns point, will start going to Gino. We're passing Gino. Off. Maybe that, or maybe for some reason, Pete, you know him better than I do. <laughs> wants wants to include wants to include Charbonnet. He likes himself some Charbonnet. He likes what he saw. So I'm not saying I'm not saying you know Ken Walker is a cause for concern, but that's something to keep an eye on. Kyron Williams, he's coming off his first bad game. He had seven points. He had ten carries for 38 yards against Cincinnati. This would have been a game that you know. Yeah, Cincinnati, Cincinnati has a has a good defense. I will I will give them that. But against the Niners, he didn't have any issues. He was able to run the ball. The Rams found a way. Maybe it's a divisional game. But maybe Kyron Williams isn't the answer that everybody thought. Maybe he is going to have those good games, bad games. And maybe teams are also searing on him now because they know the Rams want to run the ball. They want to get Puka. They want to get Tutu uh, involved. But they say if they can lock, down Kyron Williams, it's going to help them out a lot in, the, in their their game plan. Games program, it's going to help a lot. So I, that's the one thing I look at. And do I see the rest of his team doesn't have other running backs? He doesn't believe in running backs. He does. And so I look at this matchup against Brian. On paper, yeah, Hector is going to win. But it, you know, moving forward, I mean, I'm gonna give Hector the win. But moving forward, I would, I would really, I would start to ponder that question in Hector's little brain of his, <laughs> and say, maybe I need to pick up another running back because right now, I mean, he has Matt Breida, but we know that he's gonna drop that once uh, Saquon comes back. But uh, that's the only weakness that I see on his team because he's loaded on receivers. Uh, but, but yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Kyron Williams, he's getting the bulk of the work, and that's always going to be valuable. But I don't know if McVay is going to look to add in that spot if he keeps being as inefficient as he is. Because as much as Hector hates those advanced statistics, the advanced stats do not like Kyron Williams. They're saying he's scoring points because he's getting more touches than almost any running back in the league compared to what you would normally get when you're giving the ball to two different running backs instead of one, or sometimes even three running backs instead of one. So Kyron Williams is very valuable because of the value, volume. I'm starting him next week. But you've got to start to wonder, are they going to look to improve at that position to get more touches to some other players like a Ronnie Rivers or bring another player in, see what they can do. Will they trade for Jonathan Taylor? McVay almost traded for Brian Burns last year. So there's, just because they might not look good doesn't mean they're not looking to trade their picks. And then for me, it's Hunter, Hunter Henry. Is that run over? That was two touchdowns in the first two weeks. He's not going to get a touchdown every week. Matt Jones is not going to throw a touchdown every week. Mm -hmm. 
So is, is he going to look to improve at that tight end spot to make it more balanced, to to go up against a Paul that has a Mark Andrews and not lose a positional advantage before a snap is even had? That's what I'm looking for for Hector's team because I'm not worried about Ken Walker as long as he stays healthy. He has missed a game. He, he has a propensity to miss a game or two. But maybe he misses a game down the line and then he can use a sharp a day. But I think Ken Walker, that's his team. I said this in the first show. I don't know why he was getting drafted in the third and fourth round. This is the guy. He's an alpha. He hangs out with DK. He hangs out with Tyler. He hangs out. He's a second-year player hanging out with all the veterans. I know how Pete Carroll runs the locker room. He sees the dynamic, and he puts an emphasis on that player because he knows he's one of the guys. He's one of the boys, baby. So I like Ken Walker, I think, a little bit more than you do. He had a huge game, NFC Player of the Week. And I think Hector has a pretty good team. Moving on to the prediction, before you fall asleep, that maybe. Hector versus Brian. Who do you got? Hector. I think Hector, Brian's team. Brian's team. <laughs> <laughs> I love him to death, but man, his team looks like <laughs> looks awful. He's got Brian Robinson going against Philadelphia this week. Keenan Allen is the one player he needs to protect yeah, at all costs. Yeah. Drake London, awful. Not the player, the system that he's in. Sam Laporta looks Arthur like the guy. But man, Ro Romeo Dobbs. Is he the guy? I don't know. Yeah, it's That's really hard to say on out. that one. Uh, what I'm interested in Brian's team is I like the Brian Ro Robinson acquisition, hard matchup against Philadelphia. Drake London, he's going to have to figure out, but I guess you've got to stick and play with your guys until we get some more information. Sam Laporta, great pickup, great find. I really want to trade for him early on, and we almost had a deal actually around week one. Uh, before he he broke out, but it fell apart. It had it had Mostert in it, so he probably would have won that trade anyway. But it was a deal that we almost had. Uh, so for me, Brian has a really weak matchup, weak. But his team is actually second in scoring of all the two and one teams. So I think his team has a lot of potential, and I think Brian's gonna do what he always does and just be good at fantasy. But I agree with you this week. I have Hector winning, and I have Hector retaining the number one spot. That's all we got for today. Victor, fun as always. Any final thoughts, anything you want to get off your chest? You've done enough. This might have, I might double this as a therapy session and charge you some money. Final thoughts? All I got to say is each one of you look right in the fucking camera right now. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not dead. I choose to fight. And I'm coming. Augie, you're first. Then, Big Kev. Then, he's coming, you. boys. Coming. Sounds like, sounds like Deion Sanders. We're coming. We're here. That's all hey. we got for today, folks. The Buffaloes. Are down. That doesn't mean they're Lots done. Of ducks. USC, Caleb Williams, Buffaloes. We'll see. We'll see. Remember, Jamal Adams returns on Monday night football. 33 is back in the Seattle backfield and up on the line of scrimmage. Can't wait to see that one. Thank you, football, for bringing us together. And remember, never give up on a non zero chance. Peace. <laughs>